I love story-based games, particularly those where you have different choices and I feel like the branching dialogue allows my choices to impact the story. However, that can be a little bit hard to write if you don't have software that's explicitly made for that. And one of my favorite ways to write these kind of stories is using this free tool called Twine. And Twine's amazing. It has this online editor where you can create these different nodes and then set up which um, other nodes it could bring you to depending on what options you choose. So for example, if I choose um, this option here, it'll take me down to this node where I can go on a little side conversation and then maybe return. This method is also very useful when you're creating branching dialogue where you're going to face a similar difficulty where it's again a non-linear story where you're going back and forth. And so Twine is a great solution for that. However, there are some limitations. When you want to play this story, it's going to look something like this, which is really great for play testing. It allows you to click the different responses and bring you to the different sections. However, it's not really great for exporting into working into a larger game like Unity, for example. If you're just creating a text story, it might be fine to give somebody an HTML file that you create through Twine. However, if you want to incorporate it into a larger tech stack for your Unity game, a few extra steps are needed. Mainly, if you save this page, which you could do by right-clicking and saving the page as, and I'll overwrite my previous one, but if we, if we pop this open for a second, and I'm just going to use um, Notepad++ here, you'll see that the file it creates is really yucky, okay? There's a whole bunch of HTML crap in here that creates a huge file size, and all we really need is the text data and the sort of branching logic that you've written. So this kind of section is all we really want. However, the default story format, which is uh, usually a flavor of Harlow, and we can see the, the story format here, is it's just really dense, there's way too much information. There's an alternative though, we can download a different story format called Intweedle. And if we use that story format and we play it, we'll see that it reduces our Twine story down to just the bare essentials. You'll see that here we have the name of a given node, the text, and then the different response options printed very neatly once per line. This is a way better option when it comes to exporting your story format. However, it does require some steps to set up for Twine. To add this new story format, let's go to Twine's main menu by clicking the home page and then clicking over here, Story Formats. Then we'll click Add a new format and paste this string into that section and then click Add. I've got a little error here because the story format is already added, but this will allow you to add it. And now we can select it here as the default story format. Now let's see how I can use my story format to export a story which I wrote called 27 Street Traffic, or 22nd Street Traffic, sorry. So inside 22nd Street Traffic, you're gonna wanna go here, click Expand, change your story format, and now you wanna select in Tweedle. I use Harlow for playtesting when I'm inside the Twine Editor, but when I'm ready to export it to Unity, I select in Tweedle, simply push play, and then copy this text and then save it in a text file. Here's my story, which I've saved in Unity, called Twine Story, and I've saved it as a .txt. Here are my scripts for this project. As you can see, there's not a lot. Uh, most of them are actually just for the visuals. So for example, Shaker shakes the words and Slow Typer slowly types the words. But the ones that we'll need are the dialogue object and the dialogue controller. And those are both available in the description. Here's the dialogue object file. This is a public class, and it includes several definitions which allow us to convert our story into an object-oriented programming representation within the code. So the first object is going to be the response. Then we have the node, and then we have the dialogue object itself. And that's it. So let me show you what those look like if we're comparing them with Twine. So for example, this would be the dialogue itself. It's your whole story. Then the node is one of these single boxes. And let's pop that open. So this will have something like a, a title here. It'll have text, which is this section. Uh, it may have tags. So for example, this is tagged memory. And then finally, it'll have a, a list of responses, one per line. So that's what's represented here. Then finally, each one of those responses will link us to a different destination node and might also have some display text, which is what the user will see as an option. So in my final version of the Unity game, 
I actually only have Twine as this game. So you might normally have Twine as some way to integrate dialogue into a larger game, but in this example, you'll see that this main menu is actually just a node itself. So this is completely Twine when it comes to this Unity game. And here you'll see the title, the text, and then three response options, which come from this node over here, where again, it's the title, the same exact text, and then these three response options. However, you'll notice that while it says begin story, learn, and credits, the nodes that it's actually linking to are San Francisco, you can help, and credits. And the reason for that is because I don't always want to display the text of the destination node. So for example, even though I want to send them to the you can help node, which means the title is going to say you can help, I want it to show as the text learn. And so in order to do that, I've modified the paradigm for Twine. Oh, shit. I've modified the paradigm for Twine just slightly where you can type in text before the response option here. And so while that might look a little weird in the traditional Harlow format, this allows me to parse out if I want to, instead of seeing San Francisco 2050, it'll just show begin story, but it will bring me to the node, which is titled San Francisco 2050, which looks like it's right here. Likewise, it will say they let your city rot, but bring you to the title that says they did this. Okay, so that's one additional optimization that I've made. And the only other thing to note is that in your story, you're going to want to tag your start node with the tag start in all caps. So here we'll look at some methods. Basically, the response just has this uh, constructor here. The node uh, class just has a check here, which can determine if it's the end node. I started working on a print method, but it doesn't look like I quite finished. And then the dialogue um, class over here doesn't really have anything too interesting besides the parse twine text. And so this is really where the meat of the algorithm comes in. So let's expand that slightly. And this will show you that it's just going line by line and it's reading in all the information to create this dialogue object, which is composed of many different nodes and responses. Now, I won't go through this code line by line, but you can see it's pretty well commented, explaining how in some cases we might see different formatting for the lines. So for example, here's a format for a line that doesn't include a tag or sorry, that does include a tag. So you can see it's tags here, then it's comma separated. And then here you'll see the format for a non-tag line. Similarly, I need to extract the title, the tags, uh, the messages here. And then we just have to consider that edge case I mentioned, which is whether or not we have some display text to override what we should show when we're displaying an option for different responses. So that's our first class completely described, the dialogue object. And now we'll jump into the only other class you'll need, which is the dialogue controller. This dialogue controller has public events for the node entered handler, which allows whatever your viewer system is to subscribe to when a new node is encountered. It can also show you what's the current node. It can give you responses for the current node. It has an initialization method, which is going to call the on entered on your start node. And then finally, it has a method called choose response, which given a response index, it will progress the dialogue in whatever direction your user has desired. So these are the only two classes that you need to implement Twine into your Unity system using the nTweedle format. However, I thought it might be interesting to show you my dialogue viewer, which again, it's gonna be highly specialized for whatever game you're trying to create. But for my case, um, you know, a lot of the effects here are just visual effects on top of the dialogue backend. So for example, here on start, I'm just going to subscribe to the controllers on entered node event. Then I'm going to initialize the dialogue and then I'm going to just set up some button press um, delegates. I have a helper method here called kill all children, which basically takes a transform and removes all the children below it, which is a little violent, but it gets the job done. Then we have on node selected, which is going to be just a helper method that's going to tell the controller I'm now ready to choose a node of a given index. And then I have the on node entered. So again, this is the method that's going to be called whenever the controller triggers that event on entered node. And so within here, you can see that I'm just resetting the displays. I clear the title, I clear the message, I kill the response children. And then I have three different delegates which are set to fire um, one after another with some delay. 
So they actually go backwards. So if we're going to read this, we'll read it from the end to the beginning. So basically, it's going to print the title, and then it's going to either show a memory. It's going to either show a memory after the title, or it's going to show a message after the title. So for my game, a memory is just an image being displayed, and then showing the message is then showing the actual text of a node. So we're going to call either of these delegates, either show memory after title or show message after title. And then finally, if we were going to show a message, it's now going to type the different response options after that message. When it creates each of these responses, it's going to spawn a response button, which is going to be wired to a delegate of the on node selected so that we can print whatever the desired response is and then go to that new node. Finally, I just have another helper method here which converts a texture 2D to a sprite and then another method which will show the continue button after you view a memory, which again is just an image in my game. Okay, so here's the final product. This is a game that I've created completely using Twine, creating in Unity, and then exporting. And as you can see here, it's showing you the title, then the text of a message, and then you have the different response options which come below here as different buttons. And here we could see we just triggered a memory where it's going to show you a picture and ask you to continue. And then the picture slowly fades away. Well, I hope this video helped you in exploring how you can use the Twine format and exporting it into your Unity game. Whether you're creating a game that's just a story like mine, or you want to include that Twine system into the perhaps a dialogue system within a much larger game, this could be an option for you. Again, it's mess maybe not the most performant. It's not something that I would use for a huge game like NSA Intern, but for something like No Stranger, this is a really good solution um, because it's just so easy to understand and it's really incredibly lightweight. As always, all the code is in the description of this video. If it helped you out, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Let me know if you're going to use this in a future upcoming game. I'd love to play it. Good luck.